Hi everyone. So over the last couple of months, I've received a quite a bit of feedback from my viewers over Soundflower and how to get it to work on particular applications such as Skype and Minecraft. Additionally, a few viewers had issues getting Soundflower to work with their SteelSeries gaming headsets. So I thought I'd revisit the application and make another tutorial on getting things to work. I'm going to start off with a fresh installation of Soundflower. This is what your audio device's setup page under MIDI panel should look like. The built-in microphone should be set as the default input for your device. And the built-in output should be the speakers. For this tutorial, I will be using Mac OS 10.8.4. If you have an older operating system, such as 10.6, the MIDI setup page will look a little bit different so there might be a few things that you might need to adjust based on the operating system. Okay, so let's get right to it. First, we're going to look at how to set up a SteelSeries headset that uses a USB 2.0 cable for input and output. The setup for this device is actually quite easy. The only thing about a USB headset that confuses people is the fact that in the audio device's setup panel, you do not have a separate item for the microphone on the device and the speakers located on the device. Both of these items are aggregated together under one option. We are going to start off by configuring our system's output settings. We need both Soundflower as well as the speakers on our USB headset to access whatever sound is playing on our computer. To do this, we must create an aggregate output device. In the multi-output device settings, check off whatever your USB 2.0 headset is as well as Soundflower 2 channel. By doing this, we are telling our system that, hey, all sounds emitted by a video or audio source should flow through both our headset speakers as well as through Soundflower. This, in turn, will allow us to hear anything being played by our computer, while at the same time, it'll enable us to capture system sounds. In our case, we want to capture the sounds from our built-in microphone in our headset as well as through Soundflower which we specified in the last step will receive the system audio. In our aggregate device settings, we will choose Soundflower 2 channel as well as our USB headset. Since Soundflower will be receiving audio from the system, by using it also as an input source, we are telling our system to record whatever is playing. Selecting our USB headset will in turn allow us to record commentary using its built-in microphone. The last step is to use the multi-output device as our default for sound output and to use the aggregate device as our default for sound input. At this point, we are set and we can record. So here's the SteelSeries headset in question. A big thanks to my friend Paul for letting me use it for this video. As you can see, the headset relies on USB 2.0 in order to carry the input and output signals. Record the sound, and as you can see, um, it's actually picking up my sound from from SteelSeries headset. So this works; it's picking up my sound properly. And now, let me play my old tutorial for Soundflower and see if you can hear that device for sound output. So hopefully you can Once hear that playing this, in the background right now. Simply close this, uh, I'm going to turn this volume a little bit lower to speak over. The audio mini setup. And, and at the same time, now, I'm able to hear the sound that's playing in this video through my headset since we have it configured under multi-output device to output to Soundflower as well as a SteelSeries Diablo 3 headset. So not only am I recording the audio as well as the system audio, I can also hear the audio that my system is playing at the same time through my headset's built-in speakers. So everything seems to be working as it should be. So now I'm just going to provide another angle demonstrating that Soundflower does work on the SteelSeries headset featuring the USB input and output, combined input and output, I must say. Okay, so here I'm recording the audio and I'm going to speak into my SteelSeries headset. And as you can see, it's picking up my voice properly. Uh, it's as indicated by the bars that you can see moving on the screen. Hopefully you can make out the bars. Hello, hello, 
Hello. Uh, let me move the light. Hello. 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 So yeah, that's working. And now I'm going to play. Um, I'm not going to talk or anything. I'm just going to play the video that's on my screen. So there's a video for my old tutorial. And as you can see, it's picking up the video as well, the audio that's coming out of the video. And there's my headset. Well, not mine, but... And if you can hear, um, it's also outputting sound through the headsets themselves. Uh, let me find the mic on this thing. Yeah, so there you go. Sunflower is working perfectly on this device. The next application that viewers had problems with was Minecraft. Here are my settings that allow proper recording of this game. Under the multi output device, I have Sunflower 2 channel selected, as well as a built in output selected. The built-in output is selected as I'm using a 3.5mm headphone jack for this demo, and not the Seal Series headset. In the aggregate device settings, I have my blue snowball Hi. microphone selected, as I will be using that to record commentary. Also, I have the Soundflower 2 channel selected, in order to obtain the system audio. Both have already been set as the default output and the default input. And there you have it, it's recording sound from Minecraft without any issue. The last application that I wish to go over that people are experiencing difficulties with is Skype. Once again, under aggregate devices, I have Soundflower 2 channel selected, as well as a blue snowball microphone, which I will be using for input purposes. Under multi output device, I have the built in output selected, as well as Soundflower 2 channel, for exactly the same reasons as covered before in the Minecraft demo. So, the first thing that we want to do when we go into Skype is open the Preferences panel and navigate to Audio slash Video. In the Audio Video settings, the microphone should be set as our aggregate device. Additionally, the ringing and speakers should be set to the multi-output device. My blue snowball microphone, which I'll be using for input for Skype purposes, is under aggregate device, which is why I selected that as the input. We want to make sure that the speakers and the ringing is set to multi-output device, as this will enable Soundflower to pick up our conversation on Skype. Hello, 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 hello. As you can see, the bar on Skype is not moving, regardless of, you know, the system actually picking up my voice. I'm just going to mute my snowball microphone so that all the audio that you hear is coming through my Skype conversation. Hi. Hi. So I'm talking through my phone at the moment and if Soundflower picks this up, you should be able to hear it right now. And I've blocked the microphone on my computer so what you're hearing is coming from my mobile device and not the built-in microphone.
Hello. 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 Hi. Hello. Hello. So I guess Soundflower is working since the audio is coming through my um, headset and I believe it's being recorded at the same time. Let me show you. Okay, so when I talk through my phone, as you can see, QuickTime is picking up my voice and all the mics on my computer are muted at the moment. So the only way that voice could be coming in through QuickTime is through Soundflower. So let me hang this up right now and you'll see that it's no longer going to pick up my voice. As soon as this call is disconnected. So I'm just going to disconnect the phone call. And now, even when I talk, no voice is being picked up by my, you know, QuickTime player. So that shows that Soundflower was the one which was giving the voice to QuickTime through, you know, Skype in order to make everything work. And there you have it, Skype does work with QuickTime. I mean, Skype does work with QuickTime and Soundflower. If you're still having problems with Soundflower, I recommend uninstalling it and reinstalling it. Now, the uninstallation process for Soundflower is a bit different from other applications that you might have on your Macintosh. You actually have to go into the Soundflower folder under Applications and then run a script. And once the script is run, it'll basically uninstall Soundflower. And that's all I really have to talk about for this tutorial. I hope you found the content useful. And if you liked the video, please consider liking it and consider subscribing to my channel. I'd really appreciate that. Also, please feel free to leave a comment. I look through all my comments and try to reply to them. So if you have any problems or anything of that sort, I'll respond to it as soon as possible.